Welcome to our lecture online. Before we begin to talk about the general solution of a damped system, a damped oscillating system, let's do one more thing. Let's talk about the period and the frequency. Now, if we start with the general equation where x of t, the position as a function of time, is equal to the amplitude times the sine of omega t, and we'll just leave off the phase angle for now, then we can also write this as a sine of omega t plus 2 pi, because anytime we add 2 pi, we're back to the same place we started. And then if we factor out an omega, now you say, well, how do we factor an omega out of 2 pi? Well, we can do that by taking an omega out and dividing by omega. When we multiply this out, we get 2 pi again, and we also factor out the omega of the second term, so that's how we write a sine of omega times the quantity, and I forgot the closing parentheses, 2 pi over omega plus t. And so what that means is that this portion here is a function of time, and so it's the current time plus the time it takes to go an entire period again. So in other words, this can be replaced by the period. We use capital T for period, so we claim that t equals 2 pi over omega. Remember, omega is equal to the square root of k over m for an oscillating system. So we're going to check if that's true. Notice that the frequency is equal to the inverse of the period, or the period is equal to the inverse of the frequency, and since omega is equal to 2 pi f, we can say f equals omega divided by 2 pi, and since the period is the inverse of that, then the period should be 2 pi over omega, yes, which is exactly what we got when we went through that analysis. So we can see now that that's indeed a true statement. And since omega is equal to the square root of k over m, we can then write that the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi, right here, 1 over 2 pi times omega, where omega is the square root of k over m. And since the period is the inverse of the frequency, then 1 over 2 pi becomes 2 pi, and the square root of k over m becomes the square root of m over k. And so here we have an expression for the frequency of the oscillation and of the period of the oscillation. Again, this is still the undamped system. But now we have a complete understanding, hopefully, of undamped oscillatory motion. We've looked at the second order differential equation that is associated with that, and we've seen how different initial conditions will give you the general solution to that equation. Now we're going to look at damped systems. So starting on the next video, we'll take a look at the general equation of a damped oscill oscillation system or oscillatory system, and then we'll see that there's multiple types of solutions, and we'll look at each of those different types of solutions to a damped oscillatory system.